Hi there friends, welcome back to another episode of the Chills Twins Travel Show, where we talk about the country and its culture with locals. My name is Hussein, and I'm not alone here, my twin brother, my co-host Hassan is here as well. Hi there, my name is Hassan. You are listening to the local series where we talk about the country and its culture with locals. And this episode is about Turkmenistan. It's a bit longer, because we had so many questions about Turkmenistan, and there's not much information about this country on the internet, and we were very excited to make this episode. And thanks a lot to our friend Kaya, who introduced us to our guest, Ai Jamal. She is the type of person we would love to have as a tour guide if we ever visit Turkmenistan, because she's very smart, she's brave, she has visited many places in Turkmenistan, which is not that common to do for a girl in Central Asia. And she mentioned about her solo trip in this episode. So please enjoy our conversation with Ai Jamal about Turkmenistan. So... Your name, Ai Jamal, Ai is, it's the moon, right? Yes, uh, Ai is moon. Jamal means, um, I think it means face and beauty in Arabic roots. Uh, Jamal is actually beautiness, uh, but at the same uh-huh. time, people call it as a face. So in Turkmen, direct meaning is face of moon. Uh-huh. Face of moon, yep. okay. So you Good. people, your friends, they call you Ai Jamal. Yes, but my mom calls me different, uh, but that's um, child, oh. <laughs> childish call still. I said, mom, I'm grown up now, please don't call me that. <laughs> but uh, she keeps <laughs> calling when um, she knows when uh, to get me nervous, um, oh, when okay. to get me angry, when I'm lazy. So, uh, yeah, uh, mom knows the tricky words. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, uh, anything else you would like to share about yourself? Well, I'm Ajumal. And I'm 23 years old. Um, I graduated uh, university this year, uh, majoring journalism and mm. doing my internship at United Nations Development Program office in Turkmenistan. Also, besides of my intern and other uh, part-time freelance jobs, I voice act. Usually I like acting, uh, but I don't like seeing myself in the videos. Therefore, I chose audio. I do voice acting, I narrate, I storytell through my voices. I'm a part of a team who develops an application for kids. Um, it's an application about this st- storytelling. Uh, it's an audiobook, but interactive one. And um, I both narrate. Uh, there are um, storytellers, story writers, and there are translators who translate from Turkmen to English, and I narrate them. Time comes when I have to give, uh, there are interactive places where we have to give a voice to carrot, to rabbit, to bear, and it's on the way. So it's, uh, it is waiting to be confirmed both by iOS and Android application. So it's just interactive. Uh, when you type interactive story storybooks, you can find it. And I'm so proud. Uh, also, there are another team who dubs uh, the English movies into Turkmen. For example, uh, for the first uh, cartoon as Ferdinand, I was uh, there a goat uh, who uh, I gave the voice to goat. It was so hard to dub it into Turkmen, but I tried my best. <laughs> and uh, for now, partially time to time, I dub uh, the Kung Fu Panda episodes. Um, I give uh, voices to them uh, into Turkmen and I try to act my voice as possible. So it's a very nice job, uh, very interactive and it fulfills my potential inside. And uh, I noted three facts about me. Uh, First is uh, I'm left-handed from childhood. Wow, Um, okay. Yeah, which is... um, which, which is very not typical for Turkmen people. They like when you are right-handed, but uh, they think you are a genius when you are left-handed because you are one of the unique <laughs> among society. So okay. they say, oh, you are left-handed. Uh-huh. Okay. So and uh, they treat you differently, kind of, but in a good way, positive way. So, wow, okay. um, oh, actually, it is not from birth. Uh, it was um, artificially. I broke my right hand uh, when I was like four years old, when I was kindergarten girl. Um, and yeah, I liked okay. to swing. I liked like um, monkey stuff, uh, climbing up trees. And then I broke my hand. That's why I became left-handed. Oh, okay. 
So um, about the second fact that I learned how to ride a bike and how to swim by myself when I was 18 years old. So no father, no uncle, no brother taught me when I was a kid. I had to learn by myself. I made a bucket list when I was 18 years old. So um, by drowning myself, by um, hitting off the rock, I, f- I learned by myself. Wow. I reached the destination. And uh, yeah, and the third fact is that I have uh, traveled, uh, that I have solo traveled all five Vilayats provinces in Turkmenistan which is super rare for ordinary Turkmen girl, especially uh, not married, a girl who is insecure. And um, yeah, I just, um, it started when I was a student. Uh, I traveled to my own homeland. I'm originally from um, Lebab. Mm-hmm. So um, I need to take like trains, planes, cars, all by myself. And I was just a student. And for Turkmen people, it's weird to travel just for discovery, not for health issues, not for weddings or um, to celebrate any ceremony. You just go and travel. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty uncommon here to travel by just uh, desire. You gather up your money and you just travel. And yeah, uh, this could be one of the remarks in my life uh, to be highlighted. Wow, yeah, that's good. So you are the perfect person to interview since you know, since you've seen so many places in Turkmenistan. (laughs) You know, we did something like that when we were 20 years old in Tajikistan. We were traveling for two weeks. Yeah, we have the same culture. People think like, why do you travel? You can buy something else instead. Don't spend Yeah, save it for the wedding, save it for the car. (laughs) (laughs) You said that there exactly. were five uh, regions, or what did you say? Five regions, right? Yeah. Vilayats. Yeah. Vilayats. So Vilayats. Uh, that's why you have five stars on your mm-hmm. flag. Is it because eight. of that? Five or eight? That's five. Okay. We have our emblem with the eight triangles. That That's not triangles, but uh, that we would we call burj. Uh-huh. Uh, we have eight one, which means... Um, which is uh, the symbol of Oghuz tribes. We had always eight, um, how we call that? Uh, uh, like shapes. eight pointed stars? Yes, exactly. But we have five stars, which me, uh, which uh, symbolizes five vilayats, five provinces. Oh, provinces. Yeah. Are they very different from each other? I wouldn't say that, um, but ecologically uh, might be. We have, uh, we, for example, in Ashgabat, it could be, for example, two centri- uh, centigrees, while in Dashikos, it could be minus four, minus three, and it can even um, snow there while it's pretty cold, but not snowing or raining. So ecologically, it is. Yeah. But people, culture is almost the same with the very, very, very detailed uh, highlights, cultural traditions and mm. stuff. And the language is also the same. Yes, it is same. Um, but as all countries, we have Shiva, what we call mm. uh, dialects. In Turkmen language, we have dialects. Um, okay. Uh, it's just very few words for calling onion, for calling um, door, or how you call mm. your sister, brother. And especially the endings of verbs can differ in each provinces. For example, in even in Lebab, even in village to village, it can differentiate, but people can understand each other unless it's too Uzbek, unless it's too um, Qadak, uh, Kazakh, or any other language. Mm. If it's Turkmen, we can understand even with dialects. Okay, I see. Uh-huh. And earlier you said that you can speak Turkish. So Turkish and Turkmen, um, it's not the same, right? It's, it's, it's still different. Yes, it is different. It's as Ukrainian, uh, people in Turkmenistan call it like, it's as Ukrainian and Russian oh. language. It's that different. Mm-hmm. But if you speak uh, your language, Turkmen language, right? Mm-hmm. If you speak Turkmen, Turkish people, they, they would understand you? Um, they can get the context. For example, from okay. verbs, we have uh, the same root, but different endings. For example, 
Birmek in Turkmen, Vermek in uh, Turkish. So it's basically understandable, mm. but not too much. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like Uzbek and Turkmen, uh, t- Turkish, right? Yeah. We can right. understand tur- Turkish a little bit because we, we speak Uzbek. Yeah. Okay, nice. So what about greetings? How people greet each other? So um, people usually shake hands in here. Okay. Um, it's basically, yes, in most places, uh, men do shake their mm-hmm. hands. Uh, but women, depending on the closeness, they can hug each other. They can, they can kiss each other, or, yeah. but usually they, mm, I haven't noticed even they shake, they just uh, say hello to each other. So we have three versions of uh, saying hello. Uh, first is formal, Thalom Aleikum. Okay. And if it's... Thalom Aleikum. Thalom Aleikum, yes. Ah, you, you don't say S, right? You, it's like it's, English um, th, T-H. Exactly. It's uh, Spanish th, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Um, okay. In fact, we don't have uh, the English s, but we have only Spanish th in Turkmen. Uh-huh. In uh, in okay. literate Turkmen um, language, but we have we uh, people in Turkmenistan also use z and s. Uh, in depends on the dialects. Huh. Okay. So you say thalom aleikum. Thalom aleikum. And okay. if it's younger to older one, they always call Thalom Aleikum Aram. How are you? Okay. Yeah. And uh, if it's two friends, they call just Thalam. If uh, uh-huh. they are colleagues, if they are a little bit distant, but at the same time close, polite, they just call Thalam. Thalam. Uh-huh. And if it's two friend, uh, two friends, Close one. Uh, if they mm-hmm. are course mates, classmates, they just say Omi. What is that? Omi? Omi means Olme. what's up. I see. Omi. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a question, Omi. But they don't Olme. answer each other. They just reply as <laughs> Omi. <laughs> For example, uh, Omi. Omi. That's it. It's just the way of saying hi to each other. <laughs> yeah, we should use that today with... Kaya, your friend. Yeah, the, uh, he would be really other, surprised. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. oh man. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, the older women uh, can use uh, with each other, for example, between the neighbors, between the colleagues, all elder women, uh, they can call Armanda. Okay. Uh, it's, it includes Thalam, it includes How are you? And everything. Armanda means... Kolay gelsin in Turkish and in English uh-huh. it means let it be easy for you whatever you do whatever you are work on let it be easy for you how mm. are you something like that Armanda wow mm. yeah, something very cultural mm-hmm. yes and the answer would be barvolun Armanda barvolun barvolun means um, uh, don't get tired. Uh, everything will be all right. And the answer will be, uh, you also be present in that hard work. So we will win, achieve it together. It means like that. Wow, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what might surprise foreigners if they visit Turkmenistan? Um, I have friends who work for tourism company uh, before all the shutdowns. And they would tell me lots of experience from themselves. Okay. And one of them could be... Uh, there are lots of things that foreigners get surprised about our culture. Um, I have made a list of it. <laughs> I asked them and I got the answers. So it's embroidered long dresses with long sleeves and headscarves of the traditional women. Mm-hmm. In Turkmenistan, unlike any other countries, even Central Asia, they um, they are really they really like and appreciate their styles of wearing from history. And we have special embroidery clothes attached uh, on our chest, um, made very in very diverse patterns. We call it yaka. Hmm, okay. And whoever uh, comes to Turkmenistan gets chance to be sewed such kind of embroidery Turkmen dress. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, uh, one of the surprising thing is uh, every Turkmen woman can afford uh, to find a um, dressmaker to herself. Um, we don't have the culture of choosing in markets to uh, a- any clothes we like. We usually make them sew for us. We mm, hire okay. um, a dress dressmaker and they design it for us. Mm-hmm. I, we just uh, draw an esquisse of an, for example, fashion, and we call it. Uh, we gave them the drawings, yeah. and even if it's for dress, uh, for wedding party or any other, uh, maybe during the everyday style mm-hmm. our dressmakers make it not uh, we buy it on the markets or bazaars usually wow oh, yes cool. it's a very unique <laughs> <It's cool>. unique <laughs> yes even, i know even for men for men they um, they prefer uh, wearing classics suits jackets so it's basically uh, ready made on any markets any clothing shops okay it's easy for a men to find their sizes with the white shirt and suit and tie and jacket. But yeah. for women, it's unique. It must be unique. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who does the drawing part? Um, some women do themselves since mm-hmm. they like, uh, they see lots of photos on Instagram or any other pages and they draw for themselves. Or basically they just screenshot whatever fashion they liked and they make them with long sleeves and Turkmen version. They can screenshot any from models and they can make it to them. Uh, they can apply to their own dresses. Oh, cool. Also, uh, we have, yeah, uh, our mm, women who got married wear a headscarf like this. Mm. Um, on the, uh, it can cut, it, it's just only this part, uh, the forehead uh-huh. parts show of, of their hair. Uh, others okay. is uh, covered with the headscarf and it's very uniquely tied. Uh, with uniquely patterned uh, headscarves. Um, for example, to weddings, to work, uh, to everyday style, it can differ. The patterns, the colors. Uh, some women like to make the same color from dress and headscarf. So it's uh, kind of stylish. Oh, okay, uh, I have a question about the eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in Tajikistan, usually, probably not everywhere in Tajikistan, but in the north for sure where we came from so before the wedding girls they don't plug up their I mean they don't touch their eyebrows so only on the wedding day they plug their eyebrows so is it the same because we were in the same Soviet Union uh, country before um, mm-hmm. so do you have the same culture or you are allowed to do that before the wedding uh, you mean shaping the eyebrows yes yeah, yeah. So um, the thing is, the girls uh, who reached enough age to decide for themselves, they uh, yes, they make it, uh, they make them uh, shaped. Uh, but it depends on person's choice. Okay. But for wedding, even a girl uh, doesn't uh, ever um, hasn't ever touched uh, the eyebrow. For wedding, they can shape it uh, un- like artificially mm, uh, okay. for. Makeupper makes that as shaped as possible, but not without any touching it. So it's only a person's, a girl's decision principle. It depends on that. I see. Wow. What about men? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, good. All right. And <laughs> another surprising thing that I, uh, when I was do- doing the research, so only white buildings. I don't know if it's everywhere in Turkmenistan or maybe only in the capital, Ashgabat. So white marble buildings. Yes, correct. Um, that's one of the things I would like to highlight it. Uh, white marble buildings. Ashgabat city is included in the Genius World of Records and declared as the first city in the world's highest concentration of white marble buildings. It also includes the Ashgabat International Airport, TV Tower, largest indoor Ferris <laughs> wheel, longest burning methane crater. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's the another thing. Okay. Um, so yeah, the white, <laughs> the uh, the white marble buildings are everywhere uh, in whole Turkmenistan. Yes, we can see in every point. Um, actually, we, I I don't know uh, the exact uh, the purpose, the reason, but I think that. Um, Turkmenistan is called uh, the pearl of Central Asia. 
So I think uh, that was uh, one of the reasons they, they might be turning everything white. Um, and it gives a very um, unusual, very enormous mixture of feelings when you see everything white, you know. Um, white also can be, uh, white is tough color, you know, it, it can, mm -hmm. it's not any other type of colors. It's colorless. At the same time, it has lots of colors in that. But when you see, it, when you enter the Ashgabat, you get the first surprise of um, this white marble buildings. And by the time you get used to it, and uh, it seems to you as a very normal um, <laughs> thing. It not only in Ashgabat, but uh, in our regions and provinces, uh, we have also white marble buildings. I think we just want to be unique uh, in uh, in some ways. We want to yeah. do a great stuff with our nation, with our culture. Um, yeah, I think that's our uh, one of the part of uniqueness. I would say. Yeah, uh, I've read that the reason probably is to keep the rooms inside uh, cold because. It's very hot in Turkmenistan, so it keeps somehow the the rooms cold. Yes, um, for a certain reason it is. And uh, but by the way, you uh, also mentioned uh, the hot weather. Uh, it can be pretty hot during the summer times. That's why people uh, prefer staying in their home uh, in uh, closed place places like markets or. Um, they prefer to go outside uh, evenings. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why one of the um, surprising aspects for foreigners could be empty streets. Yeah. Because uh, the summers are pretty hot and winters are pretty cold. Um, so <laughs> people usually yeah. spend their morning working, uh -huh. taking care of the children, taking care of the school and home. And when they find time after work, they come home and they have dinner and they just go out, you know, when everything is cool and chill. They just um, fill up with every mar uh, parks and streets. It's getting full. But during the morning, uh, which most visitors and foreigners come at that time, uh, yeah, people, uh, they cannot see lots of people um, on that period of time. Mm. Yeah, and I've also heard that only uh, white cars are allowed. Yeah. Wow, that's really different. But in Iran, it's the same. Oh, in Iran, <laughs> pretty much the same, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that also a part of being uniqueness, um, the uh, white cars, the white buildings, and also in, uh, in, in Turkmen culture, w the whiteness uh, is believed to bring a luck, to bring um, success for future. For example, we have a saying in Turkmen, Yolungat Akwurthan, Manglaying Akwurthan. Ak is the color of white. Okay. And this, uh, when you go somewhere far from home, let it be a university to abroad, let it be to another region for health issues or anything, anything possible, um, relatives or elder people um, give them uh, the last words of setting them off saying may your may your way may your journey be white which means success may your reach your destination so white is believed to uh, bring luck success and is the symbol of uh, peace that's why mm. we yeah. also say that right yeah we say roh is safed roh it's road mm. and safed is white, white. Yes. it's like literal translation white road white road so <laughs> It's the same, yeah. like safe trip. Mm, I see. Yeah. Also, Mangleng uh, Akwarthan means uh, uh, may you be happy, especially when you get married. Um, may you be happy or happy life with your children, with your future family. Yeah. Forehead white. <laughs> <laughs> and inside the buildings, it's also white. I mean, the walls, the colors of the walls. It depends on the family's choice. Uh, of course, it can be different. Uh, any type of design, any type of interior design or color, anything they can choose. Uh, even my background is uh, yellow. Yellow. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's yellow, but it looks like blue somehow. But it's yellow. Don't worry. <laughs> 
And your English is so yeah. good. Do people speak English there? Oh, thank you. Um, I would say, especially younger generations, they, they do. And people used to be more Russian English type, but the young generation, I hear that they became Turkmen English uh, speakers. Uh, it, it's mostly getting larger amounts um, uh, because, in, uh, for example, there are lots of universities who, which, which teaches uh, all subjects in English language. It can be included to schools, special, special, specialized schools, universities, and um, many other courses. So basically, younger generation, in uh, most younger generation, um, let's say X generation, Z generation can speak English more or less. Okay. Oh, uh, and other, uh, there are two else uh, that people may, might be surprised uh, about when, when they come to Turkmenistan is uh, carpets, our Turkmen national carpets. Mm. Um, a carpet is a symbol of Turkmen people and the Turkmen carpets whose uh, prevailing color is dark red are woven from wool, cotton and silk at home. Usually female wo wove it at home and the carpets feature a dense texture ornamented with characteristics colored patterns portraying to one of the five main Turkmen tribes. Mm. We have um, yeah, five uh, gul, which we call the pattern, and it's in our national flag, the five um, emblems of the carpets, uh, which actually describes, again, five vilayats and main tribes of that uh, province. I see. Also, we have uh, the largest uh, hand woven carpet in our uh, National Museum of, um, I think that's national, yeah, our National Museum, we have that carpet, the large one woven for, let's say, maybe two years with hundred and more than hundred people wove that wow. for a couple of years. We are so proud because of that. Our, we, our women are such a hard worker and uh, they left lots of traces from the history. Yeah. And uh, the last one, um, but the not, not least one, I would like to mention for foreigners to be surprised is our Ahalteka horses. Horses. So, um, yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> Having developed a desert environment, our Ahalteke horses can withstand extreme heat and cold. They are most famous, most famous for their endurance because they are traditionally fed a low bulk, high protein concentrate that included eggs and butter mixed with barley. Wow. Throughout history, the loyalty of the Ahaltekes has been cherished just as much as their speed and stamina. To this day, many horses are treated as family members wow. and dressed in a handsome jewelry accessories to show their importance. Wow. Oh, wow. You don't eat horses? Maybe that's the bad question. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, mm -hmm. We cherish them and uh, we use them as transportation. Still, in some regions, we can use that. We can use uh, donkeys, mm -hmm. we can use uh, horses. We can eat uh, the cow, but we don't eat horses. It's our, um, I would say, sacred animal. Do you have a, such a thing? In our country, it's called korut. It's like dry yogurt, dry, dry bowl yogurt, ah, dry, yeah, that's, round shape. Yes, that's gurt, what uh. we call, that we call gurt. Uh -huh. Yeah, gurt. we do have it. Uh, it's made from thizme uh -huh. uh, and they are just made uh, like bubble gums. Um, yes. And we put it on, we put it on under the sun to be uh, dried for a couple of days and then it's ready. I see. It's hard. It's hard to find a nice gourd. Uh, uh, in some villages, it can be found, uh, but usually I prefer not to eat because it makes you uh, thirsty. thirsty. Yeah, thirsty. Yeah. yeah, and it's good with beer. All right. What are the three aspects of your culture you would like to put in a time box for the future? Wow, I have actually uh, more than three. So okay. It's one of good. them is yeah one of them it could be national dress code 
uh, that that also includes uh, bright kurte, dawn, and lots of nakush, lots of uh, patterns of our embroidery. Okay. Um, because the kurte could be so heavy for a newly married bride. Uh, it's mm-hmm. so heavy with uh, they cover on their head and. Mm, they can spend with that kurta I think more than two hours and it's pretty 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 heavy and that's why there are two women uh, who helps holding that lots of patterns usually made with hands and uh, yeah it's very neatly and tightly uh, woven that's why it's too uh, priceless and I would like to take it to the future okay um, and depending on the region, uh, those kurtes, the uh, colors, patterns, and uh, the shape could also differ. Uh, but anyways, it's kurte and it's Turkmen, so I would like to take it. Um, f- next one is national dance, our kushteti. Uh-huh. Uh, this is one of the very entertaining dance. Uh, I believe for uh, Turkmen culture, Kushtepti, uh, in our Balkan region, they sing Ghadal, which is based, which Kushtepti based on that song. Women usually sing Ghadal, which is again traditional uh, couplets uh, sang by our national yeah. women, and this Kushtepti is uh, played on that. It's a group work, it's a teamwork. You have to breathe in, breathe out at the same time. You have to do every uh, thing as an orchestra. You have to work as an orchestra. So it's a very valuable and that's one of the reasons um, I like watching. I like um, doing that dance as well, wow. but not very professionally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can uh, do some kushtipti. <laughs> and another aspect is musical instruments, which is dutar, goputh, and gujak. Those uh, three major um, instruments yeah. for me. Okay, of course. Du- du- dutar is like two strings, like a guitar with two strings. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, it played like a guitar, but only with two strings. Gijak is like uh, violin. Violin. Exactly, violin, but uh, played like this. And the third <laughs> instrument, what was that? Oputh is uh, played uh, on um, putting in the mouth yeah, between okay. between your teeth and ding 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 ding. Okay. Very nice voice. Okay. Mm. Nice. It's usually for women to play, but usually men also uh, play that uh, professionally. Mm. Yes. And the uh, next one is jewelry. I would like to take. I love. I'm in love with the jewelry, <laughs> which includes the brooch, guliaka, and. Bracelets. Okay. We have long sleeve bracelets, earrings. Well, majorly three only. Uh, this guliaka. Uh, so basically, it's a uh, it's made of silver, and I love some. I love silver more than gold. That's okay. why it means to me a lot. Um, I would like to keep it, uh, give it to my um, future generation, to granddaughter or my. Uh, sister-in-law or i don't know daughter-in-law sorry not sister-in-law daughter-in-law <laughs> ah, okay so in turkmen also elderly women give either their daughters or daughter-in-laws it, it passes from generation to generation that's why it, it's um value gets bigger and bigger yeah. by the generation changes mm. and the last one is tamdar which is bread baking oven made of mud ah we have that Yes, tandir. Yes. Tandir, yeah. We bake not only bread, but also samsa, or samosa. some people say samosa. Yes, of course. Same? Exactly. Any uh, any bread type, uh, any uh, any meal could be imagined yeah, mm. in a creative way and delicious way. Yeah, we miss that kind of bread here in Istanbul. But it is possible to find. I see. And the Tur- Turkmen bread is round shape. Yes, but it is known as round shape, but it has uh, it can also be like um, the melon shape. It can also be a melon shape, uh, but the flowers are all the same. Uh, they put in a different uh, shapes, but uh-huh, yeah, like oval. it could be also. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's oval. It can be oval or uh, in the shape of melon. Ah, and in the middle you have 
uh, something like how do you say this image <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say that in the middle in Tajikistan we have something like a star or ah. like some, yes, something like that exactly. a pattern yeah. it could be like uh, yeah. shape yeah lots of shapes uh, dragged on the draw, draw. Uh, we call it durtuk or durtme my mother would always say give me that durtme and I'll dik, 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 dik. I always do that and mom uh, would put it in the thunder <laughs> and wait oh, so you make home homemade bread at, uh, at in the village uh, when I was a little kid I helped my um, grandmother my mother to um, yeah make the bread and it's a traditional way to eat freshly taken from thunder freshly bread you just get your own part mm -hmm. you put it into water you soak it Ooh, and then you eat it wow yes <laughs> yeah if we have butter we put inside so it melts so good yes also butter yes exactly that could also um oh my god i want to eat that now <laughs> <laughs> what do you say so we say delicious none none you say, say none non. okay or churuk how churuk churuk oh, okay i heard that one yeah. okay churuk, churuk. Before that, I forgot to mention about sightseeing, which uh, foreigners uh -huh. might get surprised. Or the reason to come to Turkmenistan is Darvaza. Maybe you have heard of it? The gas ah, crater. Yeah. Gas crater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or uh, people usually call it, uh, I don't know, in society they call it gate, gate to hell oh. or door to hell. Mm -hmm. It's just mainly a name or a title. But the official is a Darvaza. Um, so Darvaza crater was uh, created in 1971 when a Soviet drilling rig accidentally punched into a massive underground natural gas cavern, causing the ground to collapse and the entire drilling rig to fall in. Having punctured a pocket of gas, poisonous fumes began leaking at the alarming rate. Uh, so we had lots of gas... Um, uh, natural gas and uh, just they made it ac accident and uh, to head off a potential environmental catastrophe the Soviets set the whole alight figuring it would stop burning within a few weeks yeah decades later and the fiery uh, pit is still going strong the Soviet drilling rig is believed to still be down there somewhere crater is uh, 69 meters wide and 30 meters deep Wow. I have been there personally and uh, it gave me the feeling of I am almost close, very close to the thunder. Ah, <laughs> so hot. Yes, so hot and uh, they made a barrier uh, over around so people cannot cross because it's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. And also the smell, the gas smell, the methane smell also hits you and if you have the headache uh, beforehand, and it gets doubled, wow. so it's, um, it's you can only stay there for a couple minutes, uh, not more, not more than fifteen or twenty minutes because it gets you uh, high. <laughs> oh, so <okay. laughs> um, it's beautiful in the night because uh, it's a fire, big yeah. hole, and you can get the best shot ever. So couples who want to get married have their wedding shots there usually, mm, okay. or Instagram uh, people. Exactly, or people who just travel by, pass by, and uh, yeah, they can eat their lunches and Cook. dinners over there. It's a very nice Cook place up. too. Yeah, it's in the desert, and there are, there are some gara yurts, uh, white yurts, gara yurts over there to just uh, have a night. Uh, foreigners who just uh, have transfer mm -hmm. from Turkmenistan to Iran or Uzbekistan, so they just uh, have their a night and then they go. Um, to another destination but it's a very nice place to visit is it far from the capital that place no not that far um, considering for example if you uh, if you start traveling on Saturday uh, at 6 a.m. you can reach the I think it takes only five hours you can go uh, you can reach the Darvaza in four or five hours like 12 o'clock when you leave at uh, 6 a.m and you can spend your lunch and dinner and you mm. can leave around 9 or 
8 o'clock, you can come to your home door at 1 o'clock, at 1 a.m. So it can take all your day. But if you go on Saturday and sleep and uh, come back on Sunday, that's a very preferable one. Mm. Mm, okay. You said yur, yurta, right? The place where people can sleep uh, f- foreigners. And yurt. Yurt. Yes. Ah, yurt. Gara yurt, gara uy, yurt. Yeah, it's a traditional uh, Turkmen house um, made with carpets and it's just round uh, and have the uh, upper upper side is either white or black. It's made of kamush, kamush okay. uh, basically, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's a very traditional one to fill the foreigners, the Turkmen culture. They have uh, very much uh, white yurts over there. Mm. Yeah, And probably you can try kurt there, right? Oh, well, um, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> but definitely polov or shashlik or um, gömme, what they call... Um, yeah, very national, uh, traditional food can be cooked over there. But the prices also are uh, pretty... Expensive. Uh, <laughs> um, not so much, but you have to have uh, a nice amount of money to organize that, right? Yeah. So... And palo is like fried rice? Yes, um, it's... In in all Central Asia, I think uh, it ha- they have traditional meals yeah. Yeah. Uh, called palo, but uh, cooked a little bit differently. Yeah, I see. Yeah, we say oshi palo. We add osh. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. We miss In that. our Balkan region, they call it ash. 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 Mm. Very okay. similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ash. Yes. Ash. And um, I tried balakle uh, ash, which is a uh, plov made of um, rice and fish. Yes. And barakle ash, which is a type of bird, uh, especially in Balkan, in Hazar region. Uh, they have barak, bird, mm-hmm. and yes, they make plow out of it. Oh, it was so delicious. But it, it was the first time for my stomach, so yadrgadi, uh, what we call it. Um, it was a time, it needs to be time to digest and, you know, for new things. <laughs> yes. So that's why. <laughs> but it was nice. Um, uh, it didn't give me any side effects, so it was successful. Yeah. Okay. Osh is quite heavy food you better yeah. don't eat it for dinner but we have right. it all the time yeah we have it all the time in Tajikistan for dinner I see okay so what about the misconceptions so maybe people have misconceptions about Turkmenistan uh, some of them are not true some of them true so uh, what do you think so my again my friends uh, who work and who uh, study abroad told me that uh, turkmen uh, our turkmens are still nomads um nope uh, mm. we are not nomads anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, we already settled and uh, in every province there are certain tribes uh, have been living generation to generation so, but of course, uh, some families, some minor ethnic eth- ethnic people might be still nomads because of their uh, sheep, because of their dowry, and uh, they have to move to place uh, to one place to another, or just um, the soldiers, uh, the military people can also move, but just very minor. It's not as uh, uh, as a country level or city level. We are not nomads anymore. We used to be, but not now. <laughs> and um, one of the one of the people when I was a student uh, asked me um, if people are allowed to go outside after nine p.m. Uh, they heard it; it's not welcomed. So I would say no. Yes, of course you can go out. You can hang around. Mm-hmm. You can. Um, walk in the parks, you can just uh, do your sport, night walk, or as a group, you can walk at 12 o'clock. It, nobody touches you unless you don't do anything bad. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. yeah, um, right. it's just for your own good, own purpose. Uh, if you want to have uh, your night sport, welcome. If you want to ride a bike, welcome. No problem. Um, yeah, in, I can even, for example, sometimes I have too much dose of coffee during the day and I cannot sleep until like one or two so I decide to go outside and have some round of walks and I do and then uh, I keep calm and just go sleep 
And even though there are nobody in the streets, I just go myself. And there are police officers. They are uh, who is watching for the security. But nobody touches you because you're just walking. And yeah, um, please uh, don't believe it's not true. You can go outside yeah. and just uh, yeah. That's why we are asking this kind of questions because not everything you read on the internet is true. So exactly, it's good and, to know uh, all of that. Uh, most foreigners, uh, as I told you, come with business trip or uh, they come in, in the time when people are not around. That's why they might be uh, misconceptions. Uh, but as long as they come and uh, work here for a couple months, they understand and they uh, then they adapt how people live here, how, how is their lifestyle and yes, how they uh, run their days. So basically... Right. Um, it's and uh, the third one already you asked me about eating horse meat no we don't eat because <laughs> <laughs> our <laughs> uh, usually kazakh people eat the horse meat and yeah, kazakh people yes, eat the uh, drinks the uh kumus mm, uh, yeah milk yeah milk um but i've never tried it and i don't know any people who tried the horse milk uh we just uh, we horse race we uh, take care of them at home in some villages and yeah feed them as uh, and feel like uh, one of the members of the family so horses are sacred and oh oh once i uh tried to um, hop on the horse but it took me 15 minutes because it was so enormous and i was afraid <laughs> um he was huge than i thought okay i love horses but i was so afraid at that time like there were three people trying to make me hop on that horse because uh i don't know um i feel myself like a nature person but when i come to um hoping on some animal it just makes me kind of crazy <laughs> <laughs> i have yeah. never ridden a donkey i don't know i had lots of chance to ride a donkey but i didn't mm. when i was in, in a solo trip when i was with my host families um i usually um, go and help them with their gardens with the kindergarten and getting the kids out and in. So uh, when I face the donkey, they just offer me, go mm -hmm. go inside because they love the uh, guests and they want to make them comfortable. But I don't feel myself comfortable on the donkey. Uh, I feel like donkey is also um, a part of our life and uh, they have already lots of loads on them. So I don't want to be one of the loads. I feel sorry or pity for them. So yeah. that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Just I I'm curious about this. Uh, what about the Internet? Do you have access? Of course you have. But, now. but what about is it the easy or expensive? Uh, no, uh, it's not expensive. Uh, we have Internet access. Mm -hmm. um, so far, we have in some part of the city, you can switch to 5G. Uh, in some part, you can switch 4G. Uh, mm -hmm. But other places you can um, easily check on your messages on 3G also. Uh, there is no problem for that. Of course, it uh, depends on the communications. It can sometimes be unstable uh, and time comes, it, it is super great running. So time to time, oh, but don't worry, we have access. We know everything what's going on around the world. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can use uh, the social media and uh, communicate with people around the world yeah uh, we have lots of exchange programs uh, which uh, for students for teachers for fulbright for master's degree and yes it's all done by electronic uh, e-version wow, cool. so that's why uh, people um, need internet in every now and then for their office for, for their uh, social life yeah yeah that was another misconception right yeah, yeah. I, I think so yeah mm. <laughs> exactly I also heard that you study only for 10 years, not 11, not 12. Oh. So your schools are only like 10 it, years. It used to be, honestly, it used to be uh, 10 graders. But now um, children start from six, uh, from age six and study 12 grades. It switched to, to the system uh, where they teach for 12 years. I, myself, um, I had 11th grade uh, school year, but now it's been like 12 years. Uh, all right, how people can find you online? Well, before that, I would like to briefly to talk about my travel, uh, solo trip. Uh, so okay. basically I write, uh, okay, 
after I travel, I write down every experience, every money that I spend, every people that I met, every place that I've gone, and any experience, any cultural uh, changes, uh, wedding changes, or, uh, diversity. I, I write them down and make a PDF. So, uh, so far I have done uh, the province Lebap um, with mixture of Marie and I, have, I haven't finished the Dasha one yet, but I just started it. And I finished recently Balkan travel. Um, I like to write books or I don't want to call them books because it's just travel guide and how I made my trips. For example, in which destination I started and where I ended, what transportation I used, what camera I used, where I went, whom I talked, what kind of difficult situations I faced. So everything included, but in Turkmen language okay. uh, for Turkmen audience. I just go there and leave, uh, make lots of shots. Um, I like photography, so that's why uh, they can see the photography on my Instagram channel if they want. Uh, in Instagram account, I mean. So it's Nukta uh, Nadar. It's my personal account, and Nukta Jamal is my uh, photography account. Mm, okay, yeah, we'll add that in the description. Yeah, sure. I want to make it something different, so I started posting white and black uh, pictures on that because it adds more emotion, uh, more uh, value to that, in my perspective. Um, travel is uh, is in my genes. <laughs> Oh yeah, about the travel. Um, let me just uh, briefly tell how I uh, find host families. Most Turkmen people ask me, where do you find host families if they don't use couch surfing? And uh, most of my time and energy uh, gives to that, explaining where I didn't find my host uh, families. Usually I'm from Libab, but uh, I don't have many uh, friends or colleagues in other vilayats so that's why i need to find some stranger people to host me yeah. and uh, to have a night or two with me spend a time with me so uh, one of my first uh, source is social media it could be any social media any like instagram twitter facebook or anything i just type that uh, i am traveling to this province and i need host family in this regions if you have any relatives, if you have any friends or acquaintances who might help me, um, given their couch for a day or two, it won't it won't be more than twenty four hours uh, or forty eight hours. So if you help me find the host family, I would really appreciate. And people start searching. Uh, there are always friends who finds a relative uh, who um, finds any place. Uh, I have, for example, a friend who we did a military with, so their family can help you. Is it okay? And I said, no worries, it's okay, I can take care of myself, don't worry, and just as I accept it. So uh, there are times that I cannot find a host family to my next destination, that's why I started calling my close friends, asking, do you have any classmates, course mates, or anyone that, I, that can host me? Or... Um, <laughs> Uh, because I don't know what hotel, uh, hostel, hotel there are. So basically, I prefer host families to leave the culture, to talk with the family members, to help them washing the dishes, doing the house chores, mm -hmm. or uh, helping with animals, garden, you know. It's so nice to be among them. And this, they find automatically by miracle, they find, and I end up in being nowhere but in a host family uh, talking. Uh, they prepare a meal for me, we have great discussions, and so on. Yeah. Um, cool. And usually they are kind uh, to show me around sometimes, especially historic places. And um, if you find one chain of host family, they have definitely relative or friends to another village, which I am going yeah. to. So basically, <laughs> it's uh, pretty easy to make them a uh, chain. Uh, once you find the location, you go there and uh, you tell the taxis that I'm going there. So uh, it doesn't uh, give any fishy idea that uh, you are a traveler. Oh, you are crazy doing stuff. So basically, uh, you are in the a portrait of visiting someone so it's acceptable in everywhere as a guest wow cool you are brave <laughs> well um but so far 
I thank God from bottom of my heart that I didn't uh, faced with the dying difficulties or <laughs> deathly places. I would say yes. two dangerous places. Um, so because I think the, it's person, it's all about person's energy. If you give the positive energy to uh, the person whom you talk, it automatically changes what it is actually into positive shape. So uh, it's like mutual. It, it, the, the energy is mutual. Exactly. Uh, if you tell that you are, um, for example, you have another ideas, you have another thoughts, intentions, they directly get you and they act um, as you want. So if you are nice, they are nice to you. So uh, the financial part is also uh, could be sometimes hard because I use mainly car to transport. Uh, for example, in recent travel, I went to Balkan Vilayat, which is Hadar, one of the main uh, attraction place uh, Avaza is located in. And I went there for 23 days. I was more than 20 host families. I was in, uh, I, I think, more than 18 destinations, including far mountain places uh, to like uh, different places. I think uh, you have every people should start. Uh, I mean, people who has never been abroad don't get worried uh, because there are lots to discover even in your country. That's why start with your own country. It's it's what I say to everybody who asks. Okay, how can I go to that country? To that country? Hey man, what if they ask you your history, your culture, your um, different uh, aspects of? Uh, provinces what would you answer you have never tasted that so you first uh, gather up money and go and discover talk to people and then you can go abroad uh, saying confidently that you already know about your culture and your country yeah that's a good point 100 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. percent yes what is the best time to visit Turkmenistan uh, so it's definitely in spring in especially Nowruz Bayram uh, where all flowers blossom and uh, lots of grasses and it's a mountain time. You go hiking, you go Kuytunda where the dinosaurs traces are. It's a very magnificent and magical place in uh, spring, mm. especially preferably end of March and beginning of May. That's the best for uh, weather, best for nature, best for mood. Mm, nice. You said dinosaurs? Yes, uh, there are dinosaurs traces uh, left in million years ago. Uh, there are lots of expeditions mm. have been uh, preceded. Mm. And yes, it's a magical place. Koytendar uh, Natural Reserve, they call it. Wow. I have been there too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If we ever go there, oh, and <laughs> we'll let you know first. Oh, uh, yeah, surely. Yeah, of course. I'll guide you. I have a host family in Koytendal as well. I went there in winter in a very snowy day, even though people uh, were too afraid for me. Uh, okay, don't go there. It's the best time in March. Don't go in winter. It's sleepy there. So I just uh, wanted to do some extreme sport and I wore my... Um, uh, that's why I named my book as Chopone Adiklithiachat. It travel with shepherds boots what i call <laughs> uh, i name it my book like that uh -huh. uh, because i wore um shepherd's boots it's um waterproof it's made of um, resin what we call so rubber um yes rubber boots yes rubber boot <laughs> yeah i wore that and i just climbed with taxi driver uh, he was so uh, nice like to, uh, to borrow <laughs> yes to um he was too nice to lend me uh uh, gloves. The gloves. Mm -hmm. Yes, the gloves. And we shared the gloves because I didn't have it. So my uh, hands were freezing and we wore uh, each one, wore only one. And uh, we made it like this <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> because we wanted wow. to play snow and we wanted to have fun and not be too cold. So, yeah, it was so gorgeous time. It was in 2020 winter. During okay. the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh, no, it was actually uh, 2000, uh, yeah, actually, yes, In uh, we had a holiday uh, at our university in 2019, 
in December. So I went there and I ended up in uh, Koytendag in January, early January in 2020. Nice. Yeah, sounds, sounds very interesting. We would love to go there one day. So, uh, Ajimal, thank you so much. And you were the perfect guest, I mean, to talk about, the, um, to talk about Turkmenistan. Since you've seen a lot there and, and you're so open to, to talk. Uh, yeah, and your English is good. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for inviting and giving the chance to talk about uh, the culture, cultural aspects and um, sharing um, culture as well. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy the episode about Slovenia. Here is the preview trailer. Just for our listeners, maybe they have never heard about Baby Dragon. Uh, can you explain what is that? Oh, uh, that is a baby. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> animal. How, how can I explain that? It's not a dragon. Okay, it's not a dragon. But it looks like, right? Proteus, like I believe dragon, it's Proteus. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, a, I don't know, it's, it, it's an animal that lives in a mm-hmm. cave. Yeah. Okay, and it's a kind of with no color because it's dark there, right? It's kind of transparent. And baby dragon, uh, these are these babies of this animal. But I believe Proteus is a Latin word for that. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, but in let me just try to translate it uh, right now. Translation is human fish. We call it Slovenska ribica in Slovenian. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah, try okay. to say that. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, um, the word OLM, O L M, it's not a local If you find our podcast to be fun and helpful, then please support us. You could tell your friends about our podcast. You could follow us on social media. Or you could leave us five-star rating and a nice review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And more about our work and videos about Tajikistan, you can find on our website achilovs.com. That's A-C-H-I-L-O-V-S, achilovs.com. Thank you for listening again, everyone. And we'll be back next Thursday with another brand new episode. Until next time.